It is a pleasant evening and welcome to your premier current affairs program. Broadcast this and every Sunday evening at your favorite station, NRTV. Broadcast on DSTV channel 288, The Trove. I am your host, Roderick Mashingaidze, with my buddy PJ Nagoli. PJ, how are you? How are you doing, mate? I'm alright, how are you? How was the past week? The past week was eventful. I think uh, it, it compares well to the, uh, remember the past two weeks yes, when yes. we had an interesting week. So I think we, we are getting there. We're getting there. Topical amongst the issues that were happening internally in Zimbabwe yes. was uh, the interview by the CCC president, mm. uh, that's um, uh, Professor Walshman Nue, yes. coming out in similar fashion, just like Tendai Biti did that time when you got the scoop, yes. and saying he is the third vice president, one of the three vice presidents for the CCC, mm. who are now acting on a rotational basis, a rotational basis. for the uh, 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 next 90 days or so. Yeah. Your sentiments? Um, I think the interview was, was interesting because it was the first time we are hearing Washman Nube speak, particularly in the aftermath of Jacob Mafume announcing the rotational basis presidency. We want to replay a clip of uh, Professor Welsh stating and accusing advocate Nelson Chamisa of being one of the reasons for the disintegration of the Triple C. We, we must therefore demonstrably be the opposite of ZANU PF. We, we, we must do, while in opposition, the things that we will be expected to do when we're in government. You cannot uh, run an autocratic, an authoritarian, a theocratic opposition and then expect sincere, genuine people to believe that once you are in power, you will no longer believe in theocracy, you will no longer believe in autocracy, you will no longer believe in author to those values and principles which required us to be literally the antithesis of ZANU-PF, uh, to believe in democracy, to believe in transparency, to believe in accountability, to believe in making decisions. Yes, PJ, this so, is what... Yeah. The Honorable Professor said. I mean, the, the issue of Chamisa being autocratic and theocratic did not start with the sentiments shared by uh, Professor Walshman mm -hmm. A number of people have been expressing how Chamisa has centered power around himself and people that he calls loyalists, which has led, honestly, to uh, the, the dysfunction within the main opposition political outfit. Mm -hmm. Chamisa is rumored that he is forming a, a new party. Have you spoken to him? Do you hear of such thing? No, we... We, 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 we go by what he said in his letter. Okay. Uh, he said that uh, he's taking a break uh, and he's going to come up with a new uh, direction in his life. He, we were not called to a meeting uh, of the leadership to get an explanation from him as is the norm in any democratic institution. What we are aware of is that he said uh, that the party has been infiltrated and that as the head priest, he was going to run away from the demons uh, that had infected the shrine. And, uh, and, and when the prayers of the head priest can no longer cleanse the shrine, uh, it, it becomes a sense of worry. But we are where we are, uh, where, where the head priest has left the shrine because he claim, they, there is a claim that they are demons, uh, they are infiltrated. But that's what politics is about. Uh, ZANU-PF infiltrates, you infiltrate back, and uh, you should be able to fight uh, against it. And mm. we cannot follow. We, we, yeah, it we, happens all over the world. It happens it's all over the world. Yeah. But I think for Professor Washman Nue, Tendai BT, uh, Jacob Mafumi, to continue speaking about Nelson Chamisa is Honestly, useless because this is a man who has resigned from the political outfit. They must move on. They must lead the, the opposition because right now, as it stands, they are the main opposition leaders. So they should what focus on that. What also was uh, a bit uh, tricky was that they've mentioned that there are three yes. presidents yes. in the Triple C, mm -hmm. including Madame Lynette Kareni Kore, yes. who is in parliament yes. on a Triple C ticket, mm -hmm. but who says she is with. Advocate Nelson Chamisa. Advocate Nelson Chamisa. Remember, uh, uh, there is a lot of controversy surrounding uh, uh, Mike Kore. Remember, in the past few weeks, Rodrigue, she was supposed to take over leader of 
uh, government business, of government, opposition, opposition leader of opposition, rather, in the it, National yes, Assembly. Yes. But Shwachayo then overtook her. So what I find interesting is the two vice presidents have spoken out. I spoke to Tendai BT, uh, Zenzele spoke to uh, Professor Oshmin Nue. But Amai Kore has not yet spoken out. We have not yet had her speak about where she really stands. Because what is interesting is she was she attended one of the Blue Movement uh, meetings by Chibaya and Ostalos. Mm -hmm. So we really do not know where she stands, but I think it's time for now to come out and tell us where she stands, who is she with, either Chamisa or the, the splint up faction. Because what is clear is they are now two factions. Perhaps the confusion there uh, from Madame Lineti Kareni Kole emanating from the fact that Advocate Nelson Jamisa went to pay last respects to the late Namibian president. Yes. He was asked about the future of uh, his political party, mm -hmm. and he had this to say. Once we are ready, like I said, I'm going to give Zimbabwe a clear uh, direction. But for now, it is the Lagos that we are celebrating. President Gengok did exceptionally well, and we must honor him. The best way to honor him is to make sure that we leave his legacy and we make sure that we survive and um, uh, thrive his legacy. On that note, viewers, this marks the end of our first segment. Please be sure to join us for the second segment of your show, The Trove. Hello and welcome to the second segment of your premier news and current affairs program, The Trove, where we get to speak to all things politics, international relations, diplomacy. I'm with uh, my buddy, PJ Nagoli. And PJ, when we uh, just left for the first break, we were speaking about how Madame, uh, Madame Lynette Kareni Kore yeah. has been navigating this issue of her being pro-Chamisa or pro-Triple-C. Yeah. What, what, what are your sentiments? I think, uh, like I said earlier on, it's time for her to, to come out and state her position because we are at a point where people are choosing whom to follow mm -hmm. because the, the, the MDC 2019, the Guero 2019 part have come out to say we are the leaders of this thing. Nelson Chamisa has separated himself from the Triple C and is now yet to announce his new movement. That and, is, And with him... Went the likes of Amos Shibaya, yes. Ostalo Siziva, yes. Obviously, Fazai and, and, uh, uh, and uh, Rasti Maka. is there. Yes. yes. So we are seeing that these people have already separated themselves totally from the Triple C. So for her to keep quiet at a point where it would make sense in the past weeks where they were quiet, but now is the time of decision making. You are seeing uh, Nelson Chamisa saying to us, I'll speak when I'm ready to announce. Very soon I'll announce what, yes. what, what cost. Meaning something is in the works. So you must choose a side right now. What has been happening, we see on X, formerly Twitter, mm. a lot of tiff coming between people who are in opposition as Triple C yes. and Ostalo Siziva, Seke legislator. The Seke legislator, I think... It started when uh, the, the Honorable Wheeler uh, threw a jab at Ostalos on, on, on X, saying that he's pushing factionalism within the main opposition political outfit and is acting on his own behalf and not Nelson Chamisa's uh, behalf. Ostalos, in return, addressing a rally of the Blue Movement, starts to respond to that, saying to him, you're only an MP, you were only an MP, you do not know what we were doing. So I think... It is now coming out because remember in the past weeks, Ostalos has been very clear to say, we are going to be naming them. We are going to be naming them, those that are not with us and those that are with us. So I think we're going to start seeing that in the weeks to come. Across the political divide there, the ruling party, ZANU-PF, there on the 21st of February in the year of our Lord, 2024, the day apportioned and anointed as uh, the Robert Gabriel Mugabe National Youth Day there was an event that happened at Mushagashe yes. in Mashingo. Yes. PJ, something happening there. Yes. We had the introduction of a new ZANU PF slogan, yes. which uh, resonates with something like uh, 2030, Vamunangagwa, Vaninge Vachipo. Vaninge Vachipo yeah. The president has previously spoken about 2030 day and Chipo. Yes. But interestingly, this comes at a time when there have been discussions, of course. Yes on social media, in bars, in churches, mm. around town, that there might be plans afoot yes. to Look, 
Look sure that there is a third term. Um, the moment ZANU PF attained two thirds majority in the National Assembly, and get me right, mm -hmm. because people are misleading the two thirds majority thing. ZANU PF attained two thirds majority in the National Assembly. Yes. It does not have two thirds majority in Senate. Yes. However, for you to amend the constitution, you need two thirds majority in both houses. Number so that one. there has. There is a move for that constitutional yes. amendment which yes. has to go through a referendum. Yes. Number one. Number two, the issue to do with the presidential term limit extension mm -hmm. has been a topical issue. You and I have discussed this time mm -hmm. and time again. Mm -hmm. I've questioned ZANU PF senior members and the ZANU PF party. I remember about this. you spoke to Mara Pira. David. Yes. He, right. He's on record saying. Yes. It's no. not a conversation in the party. The uh, Pupuraito Garapi, yes. who is the chief whip of ZANU PF, was point. He was clear. Yes. He came out. He says we're not going to abuse yes. the two thirds majority. majority. But would it be an abuse of power if that two thirds majority yes. allows them say they would have attained both yes. two thirds in both houses? If it allowed them as a political party to move that agenda, would it be? As a political party, it's up to them, it's up to the Politburo to decide whether or not they want to extend President Mnangagwa's term, mm -hmm. whether, whether or not it would pass with other members of the Politburo is yet a totally different question because the argument has always been a, a last term president, five years is not enough for him to finish his projects. So that's the argument that they would have to carry over to say he has projects in place, let him finish his, pro his projects. Other people will say, okay, it's one party, most probably they'll win the next election, the, the, the next president who finishes this term. So I think we are in for an interesting play of things. Considering we're in the first year yes. into the second term, we, yes. this is 2024, and we still have a long, a long way to way go, to, go yes. to, to, to 2028. But if the conversation is starting this early, something is up. It's quite interesting there. So we don't have an official position yet, save for that official position that we had from the senior members of the ruling party. Mm -hmm. We will be giving you updates of any developments that will take place in that respect. The Namibian president, uh, 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 Comrade Hage Gengob, yes. passing away. Mm -hmm. And a lot of condolences coming through. The president going there on the yes. 8th. Uh, uh, paying his respects and also advocate Nelson Chamise. Mm. We, we, we say, uh, we sincerely, you know, on behalf of the people of Namibia and the people from, from Zimbabwe yes. and from the Trove, uh, may his good, uh, may, may his soul rest in rest peace. In this, yes. yes. Um, first and foremost, again, I would like to echo the sentiments that you're saying. Our condolences goes out to, 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 to the first lady, former first lady, rather, and the people of Namibia. Um, he was a giant. Uh, if you see our leader, President Emerson Mnangagwa, main opposition leader, Nelson Chamisa, going to pay respects. I think that was an interesting thing. You're looking at one of the liberator, uh, liberation struggle faces, uh, His, His Excellency Gengob, being respected by everyone across the political divide. It speaks to his Pan-Africanism. It speaks to his uh, Africanism as a person. You're looking at the Namibian. I was reading an article earlier this week which said that the main opposition leader in Namibia uh, is, one of, is, is going to be one is, of the poor bearers. He's one of the poor bearers. It speaks to the sense of unity that he had as a statesman. So I think Africa has lost on this one. Africa has lost indeed, and Sadak has lost one of its uh, veteran leaders, liberation icons. Uh, that is the late Hage Gengob. And on that sad note, viewers, I'm afraid we must cut short our second segment of your premier current affairs program, The Trove. Be sure to join us in the third and final segment as we wrap it up. Hello and welcome to the third and final segment of your show, The Trove, where we get to speak to international relations, diplomacy, politics, and all those issues that are happening in and around Zimbabwe and the whole and the world. I'm your host, Roderick Mashingaize, with my buddy, PJ Nagoli. PJ. Yes. Last week was also interesting in that uh, we had uh, a visit from uh, Sadiq members yes. who are coming ahead of... Uh, we, we, Zimbabwe is expected, of course, to host yes. the August um, Sadiq Summit. Uh, Sadiq Summit. Mm. Um, a lot of talk going around social media mm. because it appears in certain circles that the Sadiq Electoral Observer, Observer Mission yes. report by Dr. Nevers Mumba is yes. not yet water under the bridge. Yes. Zimbabwe will be taking over as the chairperson 
of Sadat taking over from Angola. So that will happen in August of this year. So we've come to meet with the Minister of Foreign Affairs. They are our hosts. So we are going to start working on the preparations for the hosting of this summit, which will be preceded by a number of meetings, like the council meetings and the industrialization week, where we're going to also invite private sector to be part of the process. So it's a preparatory meeting. And after that, nearer the time, we'll come again and Sadak to come and check the state of preparedness of the country. Um, I think for Sadak, it's now water under the bridge uh, because you're looking at a Sadak that is coming in to say, we are coming in to check your state of preparedness to take over the chairmanship of the body. Right. So when questioned at the airport, and I think we have the footage, uh, they clearly state that we are not here to talk about elections. The purpose of our visit yes. is to, 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 to check yes. into whether Zimbabwe is ready, ready for, the summit. for the summit. And again, the debate on SADC ordering re-election, I think uh, a fresh election. I think we've gone this time and time again. We've had experts, we've, get, we've had analysts and politicians clearly state that it was political banter from the main opposition to say SADC can facilitate uh, a fresh election in, in a sovereign country. It doesn't happen. It has never happened. So for them to continue to bank on SADC to order a fresh election, I think they should move on to a new strategy. You hear now Sanchamisa saying the 2023 election is not yet over. Yet SADC is coming to say, we're not here to talk about ele elections. We're here to talk about the SADC summit that you are going to host as incoming chair. Interesting conversations there around the SADC uh, team that is here to assess, that was here to assess the state of preparedness of Zimbabwe ahead of the August event. And... They are giving Zimbabwe a clean bill of health. I'm told that they were quite impressed at the main venue yes. for the event, that is uh, uh, Mount uh, Hampton, yes. the new parliament building there. And they also had to assess the Liberation uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, Museum, museum yes. there. And they, 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 all, they also went to uh, other hotels around town where yes. the uh, invited guests will be, will be uh, located. And yes. It's quite interesting to note that uh, uh, Zimbabwe is going to be hosting in August. I've been thoroughly impressed together with the rest of the team, the delegation that came with me. Uh, we have held very good meetings, productive meetings with the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And we note that uh, the venue has been established. We are going to host it at the new parliament building. And for those who were with us yesterday, you agree with me that it is a masterpiece compared to all the other places where similar uh, events have taken place. I think they are ready. We are also going to talk to our private sector uh, so that they prepare for the industrialization week. We want an industrialization week where people are not only talking. We want to help member states migrate away from rhetoric into action. The museum is grand. This is a great project. It's a very good project, which I would really want to encourage all member states and institutions like schools, universities, and so forth, to encourage people to visit, because it's going to be an information hub on our heritage, our history. Away from that, PJ, mm. we, of course, await to see if there will be any further developments regarding our local politics yeah. in the C and also in ZANU-PF. Yes. Given that, last time we were expecting to hear from uh, uh, not Amos Chibaya, we were expecting to hear something from Chowton Wende. Chowton Wende, yes. Because he has been aligned At the to the Welshman yes. Nguye faction. He's part of the Wero 2019. To be to Nelson Chamisa, mm. and not yet clear. We were expecting to get something, but we don't have anything yes. yet. And this is going to be a part of the conversation as we go forward. I think it, it remains, I, I stand on my opinion, and it's a personal opinion to say it is, a, it's, it is a deciding point for opposition leaders to decide whether they are with the new. You, you hear uh, Jacob Mafume uh, critiquing mm -hmm. the, the new, saying the new of the new, 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 because mm -hmm. Nelson Chamisa has become 
the face of the new time and time again. So it is a deciding uh, t point for opposition leaders. Are they with Nelson Chamisa or are they with the Gweru 2019 team? If they are with the Gweru 2019 team, I think it, it is time for them to build their own thing that is separate from Nelson Chamisa. What that will do for them is mm -hmm. We, we will finally get to see if Tendai Biti, Professor Washman Nguwe, uh, Jacob Mafume can stand as politicians on their own and on their own merit and their own political strategy aside from Nelson Chamisa. Or do they really need the, mm -hmm. the popularity of Nelson Chamisa? Again, it is also time for Nelson Chamisa to stand on his own without the old guard and prove himself. If I'm to bank, I'm banking on either one of them. So there you have it, viewers. It's going to be all in our court to look into how things develop as we check on events happening in the Triple C, in the Blue Movement, in the ruling ZANU PF, and of course around the world. And from me, Roderick Mashingaidze, and my buddy, PJ Nagoli, it's bye for now. We look forward to be engaging with you and discussing with you on interesting topics around politics and international relations same time next week on your show the trove